and we can just tuck that out of our way, maybe zip tie it later. The next part we have to do is run our power wires to the brake controller. The easiest way to do it, honestly, is just to go straight to the battery. You don't have to worry about any other necessary connections. That being said, battery terminals do corrode over time, so you, that could end up losing the connection through, due to corrosion that way. That would be instead of the batteries do corrode, which could lead to uh, problems with connecting to the brake controller. Another way, it's not recommended by the manufacturer, but it could be done technically. You can come off this post here, which is supplied by 30 amp fuse, and then what you could do is come off here, go to your 20 amp reset breaker, so it's still fused to the right amperage, and make your connections here for the positive, and you could run your connection all the way up to, like say this battery here has a connection to the frame or to the body, you could probably make your connection there. Because sometimes you run into a situation where the connections are already corroded up, and probably is not in the best interest to go ahead and take them apart again and then redo them because you might have to have a bigger headache that you're not prepared to deal with. You could probably do it that way. In this case, I think we will go ahead and use this battery here. This truck actually has two batteries set up. We'll go ahead and use this one. This looks like it's a relatively decent, decent condition. There's a variety of ways you can connect to this. You can simply take the wire and a and big ring terminal and just install it between the, the post and with like this ground wire right here. There's also a little little brass tabs that you can actually loosen, do the same thing, and reinstall too. These work good, however you want to pay attention to them that sometimes the little terminals that slip on here uh, may come loose over time. So if you get intermittent problems, maybe one first thing is to check for corrosion inside of here too. Well, when you do your electrical, you may want to go ahead and disconnect the ground first. That way, so when you work on the positive side and accidentally hit the frame, you don't get a spark or short out anything. And we'll just test our connections real fast. Okay. Next we'll go ahead and mount our circuit breaker. Uh, it's always a good idea to mount as close as possible as you can to the, the power supply. Not much room to work with here, so we'll probably have to go back up around in here somewhere. Now it's just a simple matter of running a wire, a ground wire, all right. the way up into the cab, and then we'll make a, a jumper from the positive terminal to the side label battery on a circuit breaker, and then from the other post back down to the brake controller. Make sure it's good and tight. And then we'll just run that along the side here. And we'll run it through back through the firewall. So we'll go ahead and run our wire back through. Now we're doing this one at a time basically. The reason is make sure you connect your ground wire to your ground wire in your brake controller. If you accidentally run these two together by accident, you'll instantly fry the brake controller and basically you'd spot yourself a brick. Okay, that's one worry out of the way. Let's go back and run our power lead, or 12 volts for the black wire. I didn't bring any ring terminals over. I'm just, hang on one second. All right. Now, we'll run this from the battery to the one that's labeled battery. Okay, and hey, we're gonna leave this other end loose for now. This end will stay loose. We'll make this our final connection when we're done. If you don't want to go ahead and scrape against a frame or anything like that and cause a short. So we're just going to leave that alone. And then we'll make our jumper from here underneath the back to the underneath the dash.
All right, while we're here, we'll go ahead and tighten these lugs down and zip tie the wires secure. Again, we still want to leave this one loose. We'll do that as our last connection. All right, and let's make our connection underneath the dash. All right, let's make our connection to the battery and we'll test our brake control and make sure it's working. All right, let's go do our testing. Okay, let's verify our connections. Let's make sure we got 12 volts coming in. Okay, we'll double check our brake wire signal. Okay, got that good. So now what we'll do is we'll test the blue wire and this brake controller actually sends out a trace current to make sure there's a connection to a trailer. This test light uh, will do that. Not a multimeter, but a test light. It has to have a light bulb to give it a load. And then let's connect it up and see what we get. Yay, we got the green light. We'll go ahead and spin up the power all the way up. And then we'll set the manual override. Got power. And then we'll double check with the brake signal. And see how it pulses. All right. All right. The last thing you do is just clean up our wires here. And I'm going up to the, the, to the engine compartment and we're set. All right, and there you have it for part number 39523 from Taconcha. It's a power track brake controller. We installed that on a 2000 Chevrolet pickup, the old body style.